my name is Dr. Jennifer Walker. And when I do these lectures, typically I do them not as my local business, which is Balanced Wealth Space Integrative Medicine. We actually do it as a group of international doctors called the Wellness Champions. And it's our mission and our vision to get out into the community and speak about various subjects around health and wellness so that we can hopefully help shift the medical paradigm within our community. But before we get started, what I'd like to do is just ask my, my, my four of us here, um, do we think that our country as a whole is healthy? Would you say that we're healthy today compared to where we were 20 years ago? Do you think we're healthier today? Maybe. Well, I don't eat McDonald's every day. <laughs> There you go. That's good. That's good. But so I would agree with you. I think that our health, our country is not super healthy. But rather than base this on our opinions, what I want to do is share some stats with you. Is that okay? So the United States represents less than five percent of the world population. It's actually four point six percent of the world population. We spend more than three point six two five trillion on healthcare, which works out to be about ten thousand five hundred dollars per second in our country on healthcare. We consume more than 75% of the world's medication. And the highest ranking we've been able to attain as a country, when you compare us to the top 10 industrialized nations, the highest ranking we've been able to attend is number 10. So not only do we not think our country is a healthy country, the stats definitely support that. So that's one of the reasons why we go into the community and we talk about these subjects, because I really do want to help people shift and think differently about healthcare. So before we jump into the topic of stress, its effect on your health and, and what we can do to help you adapt to that stress, because the reality is stress is all around us. It's not going anywhere. But how we react and how we respond to that stress is the one thing that we can control. But do you guys think that our country as a whole is pretty stressed out? Definitely, right? Most people are scheduled now literally from the moment they wake up until the moment they go to bed at night. And now, thanks to our handy device called the smartphone, now we're responding to emails and text messages in the early mornings, late evenings, weekends, and even holidays. And what happens when you're working and working and you're working and you're letting that stress accumulate, what ends up happening is you spend the time that you do have off recuperating and recovering, just so you can get back up and repeat that same cycle again the next day. Who can relate to that? Definitely, right? So there's one thing that we know for sure about stress, and it's that stress is actually a normal physiological response. It's designed to keep us safe in dangerous situations, and it's designed to keep us accountable to things like deadlines. For some of us, if we didn't have some measure of stress in our life, we might not get anything done at all. But what's supposed to happen when you have stress is that the stressful event occurs. Your body, body reacts and responds to that stress by signaling the release of stress hormones, such as cortisol. That cortisol runs rampant through your body, which increases your heart rate. It increases your blood pressure, and it's readying you for that perceived danger. Well, where the problem is today, as we just talked about, is that people are under such chronic levels of stress that that feedback loop isn't getting turned off. And because that loop isn't getting turned off, that means we have that cortisol continuing to run rampant through our body constantly, which eventually starts to take a toll on our health. And eventually, it puts us in a healthcare crisis. And when we are in a healthcare crisis, we think that's the best or the worst time to be prioritizing our health. Definitely the worst, right? We often make decisions out of fear, out of anger. We oftentimes take medications, take drugs, most of them with horrible side effects. Even things like Advil and Tylenol, a lot of people don't realize, but there's a lot of negative um, side effects to that as well. There was a study done in the New England Journal of Medicine, and they found that if you use one of those pills a day for 365 days or a 1,000 of those pills in your lifetime, that's not a lot, right? Your risk of kidney failure was twice the general population. When they continued to study this, um, the effects of these medications on the body, what they found is that if you took one of those pills for, if you took 5,000 of those pills, excuse me, in your lifetime, which again, let's talk about things like headaches, neck pain, back pain. When you have those issues come up, do we take one of those pills at a time? No, right? Most people are taking two, three, four at a time and taking them multiple times per day. So that 5,000 comes up really quickly. But if you take 5,000 of those pills in your lifetime, your same risk is escalated now to 800 times the general population for kidney disease. That's crazy. And I think what's even scarier to me is that they're starting to tie the same research to higher risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. Who out there has ever dealt with a family member or knows someone that's dealt with a family member that has had Alzheimer's or dementia? Yeah, would you wish that on your worst enemy? 
Definitely not, right? So, I, you know, we always say, like, I grew up with this saying in my household, what's the definition of insanity? Do the same thing again and again and expecting a different result, right? And if we keep doing what we've always done, we're going to continue to get the same results that we've always gotten, right? So we've got to think and do things differently. I think one of the reasons why people don't realize how much stress they're under is that many people don't realize that there's actually three different types of stress. There's physical stress, chemical stress, and emotional stress. Now, the physical stresses are going to be things like sitting at a computer, um, even if it's a really nice ergonomic workstation. Just the nature of sitting is definitely a physical stress. Other sources of physical stress, those kids that are carrying those crazy backpacks that are worth, like most of them are almost their weight, for crying out loud. Um, definitely a source of physical stress. Um, and other sources of physical stress are things like standing, uh, you know, something that could be positive as standing work desk. But if you don't have properly supportive footwear, that can definitely be a, a, a source of physical stress. Chemical stresses are going to be things that are in and around our environment. So the food that we're eating, the water that we're drinking, and even the air that we're breathing. I'm out here in Denver, Colorado. Let me tell you, our air quality is super poor. So definitely a source of chemical stress. And then the emotional stresses are the things that you typically think about when you hear the words, I'm stressed out. So those are people that may have toxic home or toxic work lives. Uh, they may be driving their children from one side of the city or county to the other. Um, definitely emotional stressors. So if there's one thing that I can part you with today, if we were to end this call today, uh, right now, the one thing that I'd like to part with is, which is not the end, but what I'd like to tell you is that all three types of stress are equally horrible. Our bodies do not differentiate between the different types of stress. So it is essential that you're balancing out those stressors. So as an example, if you have a chemically stressful lifestyle, let's say your diet is horrible, let's say that you live in an area that has a lot of um, environmental uh, stressors in the air, chemical stressors in the air, um, let's say you love to drink, you love to smoke, then you need to make sure that you are balancing out those stressors with being positive with your physical and your emotional stressors. Same thing goes. If you have an emotionally stressful life, then you need to make sure that you're balancing out your chemical and your physical stressors. Does that make sense, everybody? We don't want to bombard our system with all, all three types of stress because that's what's going to deplete our bodies. So let me ask you all a question while, I'm, while I have you here. Um, who in here wants to live until at least the age of 100? Uh, close. Okay, so we have, we have, we have one and a half maybe with non-committal here. So can somebody tell me some reasons why you wouldn't want to live to 100? I mean, come on now. Why wouldn't you want to live to 100? It just looks miserable. Yeah. Yeah. How I mean, if you don't have a good quality. Life at 100. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if, if you didn't have a good quality of life, yeah, I, I could see why that would be a big issue, right? You wouldn't want to live and drag that out longer. So let's say that I have a crystal ball here today, and I know for certain each person is going to live until at least the age of 100. When do we think is the appropriate time to start prioritizing our health? Today. <laughs> today, as the one that just got back from the gym. Exactly. Exactly, today. <laughs> and today is the most appropriate time. If you could have done it 10 years ago, that would have been even better, but obviously mm -hmm. we can't go back in time. So definitely now is the appropriate time to deal with that. So I'm going to give you some tips that you can apply to your life to hopefully help minimize the impact of stress. Because as I said when we started, stress isn't going anywhere. But how you react and how you respond to that stress is definitely something you can control. And what I want you to think about when you think about the word stress is the word dream, D-R-E-A-M. Fair enough? D is going to stand for diet. What I want you to look at is eating whole real foods, non-GMO, and definitely organic whenever possible. You should be focusing on eating good quality fats and making sure that you're staying away from things like artificial sweeteners. We know for certain that artificial sweeteners are known neurotoxins to our body. So it's definitely going to create a tremendous amount of chemical stress to your system. You should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water every day. How many here are drinking half of your body weight in ounces consistently every day? The I big that was a right? Myth. Yes. Is that for real? No, actually, that's for real. Yes. That is for real. Make sure that you're drinking good filtered water, though, right? You don't want to drink water that has a lot of chemical stressors in it, including things like fluoride. So R is gonna stand for rest. You should focus on sleeping between seven and nine hours every 
single night. Who in here is sleeping seven to nine hours every night consistently? <laughs> so they still show too. If you're not resting, you're not healing. So one thing that you have to remember is that when you're resting, a lot of your organs are getting the necessary rest at the same time. If you are not sleeping and resting, then even areas like your heart, your heart rate doesn't slow down, your respiration doesn't shut down, doesn't slow down, which means that you're going to be putting a little bit of extra stress on those organs as well. So sleep is essential. If you're not sleeping, you're not healing. So again, pay attention to why you're not sleeping. Is it because you can't turn your head off, your brain off? Is it because um, you're hurting and every time you turn over, you have to you, you have to reposition it, wakes you up. Um, is it that you have to go to the bathroom 10 times during the night? Whatever the reason is that you're not sleeping does not negate the need um, of that sleep. So it's important that you're addressing that. E is gonna stand for exercise. So Anna, congratulations on getting to the exercise to the gym today. You should be focusing on exercising um, consistently three to five times per week, minimum of 20 to 30 minutes. I'm a huge fan of high intensity interval training. And the reason is twofold. Number one, it's efficient and it's very effective at, at reduction of fat, which is, is great um, for your overall health. But the second bigger reason why I'm a fan of HIIT training is because we are a chronically stressed out society. The last thing I want to see is something positive like exercise turn into something negative. Um, and if you are working out really hard consistently three to five times per week, then that could put a tremendous amount of um, additional stress and releasing of more cortisol into your system, which will have, an, unfortunately, a negative effect on your health over time. So how HIIT, HIIT training works, for those of you that don't know, is it is periods of, if you, if you were to take a specific amount of time, one um, method I'm a fan of is Tabata specifically. Tabata, how it works is you warm up for two minutes, and then for three minutes, you're going to go full out for 20 seconds, followed by 10 seconds of rest and recovery. 20 seconds followed by 10 seconds of rest and recovery. And you repeat that cycle of 20, 10 for three minutes, and then you cool down for two minutes. So you're talking, you know, seven minutes really of exercise at that point. So it's extremely efficient and effective and um, is less stressful to your system. So A stands for alignment and posture. Now with my professional training, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about posture, right? Um, if a lot of people believe that poor posture really just makes it look bad, right? It just looks bad. But there was a study done actually in the American Journal of Geriatrics and they found that people that had forward head posture and rounded shoulders actually had a 33% lower life expectancy compared to those with good posture. So not only does good posture look better for your physical uh, appearance, but it also has a more positive effect on your overall health. So just something to consider when you're looking at somebody from the front, you should see level shoulders, level hips, all the way down and through um, to your feet. It should all be level. Um, from the side, you should look at the center of the ear to the center of the shoulder, um, to the center of the hip, to the outside of the knee, to the outside of the ankle. A lot of times, I'm gonna demonstrate this from the side, you'll see a lot of people with their head forward. And for every one degree that that head goes forward, that puts, it's, I think it's seven times the weight of your head on the base of your neck. So it's a tremendous amount of extra stress that's just not necessary. The example I like to use with patients is a bowling ball. If we were to use our head as a bowling ball, our heads weigh anywhere from 10 to 27 pounds. If I held that bowling ball here, we could do that all day, right? But if I asked you to hold that same bowling ball out here, it's going to be much more difficult and it's going to put a lot more stress on your upper extremities and it's going to be almost impossible to, to uh, be able to maintain. So keeping that posture uh, in, a, in a normal, neutral position is essential to reduce the stresses on the supportive muscles. And then the last letter is M, and M stands for mindfulness. So what I want you to think about is the locker combination is what I call it. It's the number four, the number seven, and the number eight. You're gonna breathe in through your nose for a count of four. You're gonna hold it for a count of seven, and you're gonna exhale out your mouth for a count of eight. So I'm gonna have everybody try that. Breathe in through your nose, sit up nice and tall for me. Take a deep breath in through your nose for a count of four. Hold it for a count of seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and exhale out your mouth for eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one. Who had difficulty doing that? I can tell you, when I first started doing this, you're pretty chill, Tim. <laughs> but when I started doing this um, several years ago, I actually almost felt like I was going to hyperventilate. I found it to be very difficult because those that have a lot of stress tend to shallow breathe. So when you now force that breathing control into that four, seven, eight pattern, it slows everything down. The cool thing with this technique is they studied it at Harvard, and what they found is that people that use this breathing sequence to help with stress, it forced your body into awareness from the back of your brain to the frontal cortex, which helps with concentration, and it helps with just overall stress reduction. So it's an essential part of um, stress reduction, in my opinion. And for those people that have difficulty sleeping because they can't turn their brains off, that's an excellent way of being able to, uh, to force that conversation, if you will. Does that sound good? Does anybody have any questions about dreams? Pretty easy, right? So my professional training is that I am definitely a chiropractor. And when most people think chiropractor, they think back and neck pain. And you know what? Our profession as a whole does a phenomenal job with back and neck pain. And I actually think we do as well. But what we're personally known for is working with people who have a lot of chronic stress and the effects that that chronic stress has on their body. So things that we see a lot in our office are things like headaches and migraines, TMJ issues where you get that clicking and popping in your jaw, um, that stabbing pain in the upper back, definitely see that a lot. And even things like sciatica from our patients that have a ton of, a, a ton of physical stress from sitting. We see them all day long. And we're passionate about working with people like this. So if you're interested in finding out more about your health, finding out if we can help you with any of your health challenges, I like to extend an offer to those that actually listen to this lecture. Um, if you are interested, please contact our office. You can ask to speak with Catherine. Tell her the Rotary E-Club is at 7570. Amber, give them that code and we'll have a special for you to be able to find out about your health. Um, again, if you have any questions, if there's somebody that you think would benefit from this message, please forward the video along to them. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me personally. Thank you. Any you, questions? Yeah, I do. How do you monitor, monitor your intake of water and how do you not pee every 30 minutes? I as mean, just being you, honest. As, yeah, so two things. Number one, I'm a huge fan of uh, measured water bottles. So I use an Algene um, bottle that I monitor that. And I take, for me, I take a minimum of three of those a day anyway, just because especially being up here with all my travel, um, I have to have that hydrated. So that's how I measure it, and that's what one of my recommendations are. And once you are fully hydrated, you're caught up, you don't urinate as much. Um, your body just starts to use it effectively. But the problem is when you are first starting to hydrate, what happens is your body doesn't quite know what to do with it, so just excrete it. So the short, and the short answer is your body adapts. It's an, <laughs> it has, it's an amazing ability to be able to do that. And then the other thing is, is um, so like, for Tim and I, we do, we're either hovering over something or we're sitting at the desk. And it's like, if I don't remind, if we don't remind ourselves to put our shoulders down, we end up being like this by the end of the day. And I don't know yeah. how to keep reminding myself to like, put your shoulders down. So checking in with your body, one thing that I recommend to our patients is tying it to a repetitive specific activity that you do during the day. So as an example, if you're hydrating <laughs> and you're peeing a lot, <laughs> every time you pee, make sure that you're, you're, you're checking in with your body and, and stretching out. For people that are in the office, if you tend to go to the copy machine or the printer multiple times per day, just tie it to a specific activity that you do. So for you with your, your, your work, I would find a task that's repetitive that you're doing maybe every 30 minutes to an hour at the most. And every time you do that specific activity, that's your trigger mm -hmm. to check in with your body. You talked about shutting your mind off in the breathing exercises. Do you have any other recommendations for kind of closing your mind at night? Because, I mean, I've tried some of the meditations, and it's just like, okay, the people in there are just talking too much. <laughs> um, I, I will say that to me, it just needs to be a re – for me personally, it's repetitive. If you can do something that's repetitive that you're not attached to, that's one of the best ways you can do it. That's why that breathing exercise is so effective, because you can do it without really having to think about it, and it's repetitive. So just something repetitive that will allow you not to attach to it. So like as an example, if you were meditating, um, if you were to meditate on a specific word 
that has nothing to do with anything that you do, um, you know, water or however you want to do it. Water might not be good because you may have to use a restroom. But <laughs> uh, if you can find something that you can attach to um, that is that is not going to trigger anything else, then that will oftentimes allow your body to shut down. Your your brain primarily to shut down. Actually, that's usually the bigger deal for most people that have sleeping issues. Yeah. Anna, did you have any questions? Perfecto. Excellent. Thank you I very do much. use that breathing technique when I can't fall asleep, and it, it definitely makes a big difference. <laughs> it does. It makes a huge difference, especially if you can, again, get used to that um, mm -hmm. the re repetition, because a lot of times people have chronic stress, like I said, they shallow breathe. So sometimes when you do that, it, it, take, it takes a little bit for your body to, to relax. Once it relaxes, that's usually where you can perform that without any issue. Perfect. This is perfect. Interesting. Contact our office number is 540-343-0055, and Catherine would be your point of contact if you have any questions or, or um, specifically about your health. Thank you guys very much. Have an awesome night. Thanks, Jenna. Appreciate you.